Good morning everyone, Dragon Man 44 here. Uh, this is going to be part two of the air to air heat pump installation in the uh, in the attic at my son's house. But right now I'm going to head down and put a couple of temporary fluorescent light fixtures up in there, some old ones I got off job site, kind of get us some uh, some area that we can see a little bit better in, you know. And then, uh, then we got to go about the business of putting us some planking and stuff down so I don't step through the drywall too bad. But uh, that's what we're going to do this afternoon. But I'd like to say, I don't know what I'm going to get on video. I did get or the fitting made that's going to attach the rear of the furnace to the return air, that funny looking offset return air box that we made yesterday. Uh, this is just nothing but a, looks like a fancy end cap. The flan service is going to screw up against the furnace, the air handler. And then I will cut this out and dovetail this and then reach down inside that return air fitting and fold over the tabs inside that return air fitting to make a dovetail connection and then of course everything every joint every seam everything on the duct system will be painted with a uh, with a duct sealer it's uh, you paint along with a one or a two inch brush and you just kind of slather it on there nice and as evenly as you can but thick enough uh, you know and it'll stop air leakage because if we're going to wrap it in the, the mylar coated bubble wrap you don't want to have the potential for any openings in that ductwork to start creating a balloon out of that out of that sealed mylar insulation wrap because eventually what it'll do it'll cause the tape to give way and then the the insulation is gone we're going to go ahead and seal that duct wrap it in mylar tape that off with aluminum foil tape extremely good stuff then we're going to blow cellulose over the entire duct network really thick really deep cellulose we're probably going to put another 12 inches in his attic and mound up over top of all the ductwork all the branch runs and everything except for the air handler. That's what we're doing right now. Like I say, I don't know how much that's going to get on camera, if any of it at all, because it is not pleasant. So here we are. We're uh, getting ready to to start the preliminary install, anyway, of, of that heat pump in my son's attic. And obviously, you can you can see where we're going to actually put it. That's going to be the return air, I think, coming up through there, right next to the attic fan. And of course, we've got to build that attic fan up. Uh, about 18 inches all the way around because we're going to totally encompass the supply air duct uh, well the whole duct that work with blown cellulose when we get done so we have to prepare that attic fan and also to prepare for the job because it's so dingy the other day I came down and put a couple of um, lights temporary lighting up here to where I can see now I still got a third area which is down underneath this little three and a half foot crawl space over there that goes to the far end of what's going to be uh, an additional bedroom. So uh, our ductwork is going to have to essentially drop down and then go in either direction through that opening and then back up this direction where I'm standing. So it's going to be fun, but it really won't be a big deal. It's just the aggravation getting everything up here into the attic and then, of course, working in it in these uh, in the fiberglass condition. We made a little headway yesterday by getting the, uh, the air handler actually hung in the attic and we got the return air grill. Uh, up through the ceiling, we got the fancy fitting with the uh, with the offset installed, and of course the end cap and the dovetail connection connecting the return air opening to the back end of the of the air handler, and we've got the air handler hanging level, and you can see the auxiliary drain pan we made. Uh, remember, we had to use the box and pan brake to make that. Of course, it's not um, installed yet. It actually has to be supported off the bottom of the air handler with a little bit of a tilt to one direction with the float switch in case uh, in case it overflows the drain or whatever overflows of course that panel catch it the float switch will shut the system off but uh, take a look at this um, inside here I turn this light on here there's the return air opening and then this is the short connection duct that we made I think I remember describing how we would attach that with uh, with dovetail connections I'm going to show you that give you a brief explanation of why that's reasonably important what you're looking at is the rear end of the furnace and this is the attachment duct here is only a two inch flanged duct that actually had to field cut and prepare for dovetails to where we could latch the the return air duct which is the penetration from this from the living space up into the entry of the return and into the bottom of the furnace and by dovetailing it you can take your hand seamers and you can crimp this down so terrifically tight that there'll be minimal air leakage and if you notice there is no insulation in this duct uh, what's become uh, common practice now is to use a mylar coated bubble wrap to uh, to insulate these ducts on the outside instead of the old one inch duct liner we used to install inside the duct. That does two things. Um, 
actually it's a higher R value than the one inch fiberglass. And the second thing, it is, does not require you to make the duct one inch bigger all the way around the perimeter to compensate for the one inch total air space that you're losing by the one inch insulation pad all the way around. Plus it's not itchy, you don't have to worry about fiberglass becoming dislodged and blowing you know, into your airstream and stuff and down into your living space. What you're looking at here is a standard S and drive end cap that slides into the S's on the one side and then attaches with the drive cleat on the other side. Now I'm trying to do this one handed so it's not going to work very well. But this slides right into the uh, the S lip over here and this because of the drive tab that you use the, the C channel drive to attach it and then seal it together uh, just like normal duct. There that's halfway in there. And you notice there's there's openings uh, that little bit of leakage. Normally if this is a basement installation that's acceptable. It's it's That'll be covered up when you drive the drive tabs over. But remember, we're going to paint on the uh, the duct seal, the commercial duct seal, around virtually every joint. And we're going to totally seal the duct system, the supply and the return air, to maintain integrity of the airflow so that we have no warm or cold attic air infiltration into the return air or lose the high pressure duct heated or cooled air out of the uh, main trunk going to the uh, living space. Now down inside here you see those louvers. That is the return air filter grill opening. Whenever we're done with the system there's two thumb screws that open up. That hinges down and you put a standard 16 inch by 20 inch pleated filter into that, that filter slot and raise it back up, hinge it back up and then latch back down with the, uh, with the screwdriver. So now your filters can be visibly seen from downstairs whenever they need to be changed and you can change it by stepping on a, a step stool without having to come to the attic to change your filter. We're converting this air handler from an up flow to a horizontal flow and to do so we have to pull out the uh, the evaporator coil. This is the new uh, the newly designed what they call a micro channel evaporator coil instead of having refrigerant piping pass through of a specific size yeah, reject the heat in the heat pump mode uh, to the airstream or to attract the heat from the airstream if it's in a cooling mode. The uh, micro channel is much more efficient uh, they, they create their own issues when it comes to refrigerant 410, but that has to go in in a horizontal position. The drain pan had to be taken off of the bottom and actually converted for use as a, uh, a right-hand discharge uh, furnace, a left-hand entry, right-hand discharge. This particular brand can be upflow, downflow, left-hand discharge, right-hand discharge. It comes uh, universally adaptable uh, in the field for all those applications, which is really cool. Now, there's a lot of things to take into consideration whenever you're... Uh, whenever you're laying out ductwork. Like there's uh, the main outlet, the, the footage per minute or the airflow speed at which the air you know enters your ductwork is important. That's called uh, discharge velocity at the outlet of the fan. Uh, that's gonna be determined by the physical opening on the discharge side of the furnace. Uh, the factory takes care of that, that's not a big deal. But then you've immediately got to, to consider what dimensions the ductwork needs to be uh, if you're going down a main trunk line or turning and going two directions at the same time or entering an unbalanced portion of duct like this one's going to be. You have to figure out how many CFM you need on that end of the space versus how much you need on that end of the space. Then you have to adapt those duct sizes to compensate for the, the air speed for the quantity of air that you need to pass through that duct. So the whole thing in a nutshell, if you're put in fossil fuel furnace with uh, gas, natural gas, LP gas, or fuel oil, you want to size that main duct for 800 feet per minute. If you're putting in a heat pump, you want to lower that velocity, so our target is going to be 600 feet per minute. So now we go back to business of actually sizing the duct. The discharge air, like I say, is determined. This particular one goes off at 13 by 13, and then we're going to have to pinch it down because we're going to send roughly 250 feet to the single bedroom that goes that direction, and then we're going to bring the other uh, 550 feet of air to the north end which is going to have five registers come off of it and the whole system is only 800 CFM because at the rate of 400 CFM per ton, two ton unit is going to deliver you on high speed 800 cubic feet of air per minute. So that's the whole thing in a nutshell. So now we got to go ahead and, and figure out and calculate out what size ducts we need to make, uh, whatever transitions and fittings we need, head to the shop and make them. I'll bring you along for the ride if you all want to come along if you ain't bored too much. So for now this is Tractor Man 44. I am out of here for today.